Um, I'd like to welcome up to the stage uh, Dylan and the producers of the film for the, uh, the Q&A. Three of us? Great. Let's do this. You guys got water? All good? Pass it around? Drinks? Some some drinks? Let's do it. All right. Uh, so let's start off. Um, who else is coming up? Great. We've got. Welcome. And Josh. Great. Hey. So we'll just get started, and whoever joined. Here we go. There it's so go. bright. You can't see nothing out here. So. You can see nothing. So can we bring the house lights up just a little bit so we can see if hands go up for questions? Is that possible? House lights? We'll see. Okay. Um, so first, I'll start off, and then we'll open it up to the audience, because I'm sure you guys will come up with... The, <laughs> that did not make it better. Um, there we go. Oh, there we go. Actually, that will dim it a bit, won't 3D it? glasses. Yeah, where are they? Oh, my God. No. Uh, so 3D. What made you guys want to make a movie in 3D? Good question. I just pointed. Yeah, Josh Miller will answer We're just that. Pointing. Yeah. Um, I think, it, well, really with the story, it was kind of a way to uh, tell it in a different kind of feel. 3D to me is a lot like lighting and uh, sound design. You can use it for a tool. What we really tried to do was put the characters outside of the screen so you were kind of a part of that on the journey with them. And I think outside, when they were outside, that was kind of the strongest part where we were able to push it and incorporate the story so you weren't just looking at a flat screen. You were kind of looking at a stage and uh, just to kind of immerse you a bit more into it. Mm -hmm. Now, were you looking for a project to do in 3D and then you found this, or you read, you found this and then you wanted to do it in 3D? What was the order? Uh, it was kind of looking for one, and I, I felt just kind of because it had that adventure aspect to it, it, it would kind of lend itself well to giving it a try. Um, when a lot of people hear romantic comedy um, and the words of 3D, it's kind of a, lots of questions get asked. But uh, I, I don't think 3D is limited by genre. I think it's just another tool that can be used to enhance the story. And so what were the challenges you found with, uh, this is your first 3D film, yes? Uh, yeah, this is our first 3D feature. We did some shorts and some tests, but uh, this was our first 3D feature. Um, there were lots, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a slower process, and uh, when you watch it in um, 2D, it's a bit different on how you kind of would cut things and scenes hold a lot longer in 3D because the audience can explore the image a lot more. Yeah. Other challenges, um, obviously, just the, the, the size and the, of, of the cameras and, and giving us all the locations we were at, that was a challenge. Um, basically, there's not a lot of independent films that are shot in 3D. Mm -hmm. So when we looked for workflows and, and just to how do you get this done on this kind of budget, we, we had to experiment and kind of rewrite it a lot along the way. And so that, you know, long days, uh, lots of challenges in post. but. Um, Especially from you know we, we had a, a great a great crew and, and, and support team around us to help make this happen. It was a, a truly a, a team effort. A, a number of people are in the audience. Um, thank you so much for for all your hard work. It was, um, so yeah, it, it's just a it isn't the, the first feature, but it it was in a lot of ways because 3D was it just from a producer's standpoint changed changed so mm -hmm. much. So. And it, I mean I think you guys will agree that it, the film is gorgeous. It, um, especially the location. Where did you guys shoot exactly? West Mirren, cinematography. Yes. And what was your shooting schedule? Um, all right, well, essentially it was basically 30 days that we had, but we covered a ridiculous amount of ground. Yeah, it's amazing. Like we shot, the majority of it was shot here and around Edmonton and, and area. <laughs> but uh, we shot, I mean, we had some gorgeous locations, Brule, Canmore. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, it was all around, like that. all around Alberta. Devin, all over the place. So. All right, great. Do we have any questions from the audience? Just raise your hand. I have one. Great. Okay, how was working with the bear? <laughs> <laughs> uh, We're talking with Sean Roberts here, not the, the bear. Yeah. Uh, the bear was uh, pretty good, to be honest with you. He did his... Uh, he did most of his stuff. He had one diva moment where uh, he was supposed to roar and decided to turn and wave to the camera. So we spent about 20 minutes being like, all right, Whopper, be scary. And then he would turn around and go. His name was Whopper, everyone. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, as a director, you're locked inside of a tent and they're like, you can come out when he's done. And so you're like, all right. So you're really limited to what you can do. So it's a lot of prep and um, uh, just yeah, pre-production as to how you can kind of design it. 
For the, one really interesting thing about the bear is that they basically operate on their stomach. And because we shot it in the winter, they're typically pretty groggy. Um, and so they had a, a big bag full of hot dogs and meat that they would try to feed it. And that whole scene took like a whole full day to get that, that short little scene. And the thing was, we're always we're racing against the sun, but also his stomach. As soon as he got full, we're done. And you can't really, you know, go into his so trailer and give him somewhat him pep hungry. Talk, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but not too hungry. hungry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's a fine line there. And but but those shots where we see Jewel and we see Sean, like they were actually you guys didn't do any camera trickery. That was actually them. No, that was them. Jewel was pretty. She was pretty cool. She was pretty cool. Sean was just like, "This is it. This is my legacy. I'm gonna die by bear." And I was just like, "If you're gonna die, that's a pretty cool way to go. Like you'll be remembered by dying by bear on set." So it was. I can attest. I happened to be friends with Jewel, and I got text that day with a, with a bear and a photo of Whopper. So, uh, any other questions? Right there. Uh, really good observation. Uh, Tom Gunier was our uh, drone operator, uh, and also Wes um, Doyle provided some drone work as well. Um, basically, we shot it in, in 2D, oh. yeah, and we, we sent it overseas to get converted. Um, we, we looked high and low to find a, a stereoscopic drone uh, solution, and it was just cost prohibitive. So that was kind of a big risk for us to see how that conversion work wanted. Most, most everything you see is shot in native, which I think is really unique for this type of project. Could I speak a little more on that? Oh, uh, yeah, I think uh, if I could have uh, Dylan Reed, Wes Baird, and Lindsay McIntyre come up here, because I think you guys should be up here as well. Um, Absolutely. So Wes shot our movie, Dylan made all the 3D possible, and Lindsay made it look so gorgeous with her production design. Um, and what was great, uh, wait, I'm supposed to talk about aerials. Uh, so aerials, yeah, drone stuff, lots of fun. Mm -hmm. To shoot that in 3D, I think it was $70,000. So we opted to go in uh, 2D and kind of figure that out on the post side. Um, Actually, oh, those were, those were, yeah, those were yeah. shot in 3D. Those were in a helicopter. We were in... Uh, Brule kind of shooting some pickups, and uh, when we were driving up there, I, I saw a helicopter um, <laughs> sign. I said, "Hey, Andy, well, we're up here. Let's let's okay. jump in this helicopter." And the yeah, my poor producers, they dealt with that all the time. I was like, "Hey, we should have a bear in this movie. We should have helicopters." <laughs> um, you just saw a helicopter on the side of the road, and you jumped. Yeah, in? pretty <laughs> much. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's independent filmmaking. Well, everyone. well planned. Yeah. 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 Come on in. Did you did you want them to speak on anything in particular at this point? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you brought them up, Dill. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I I mean they're up here because they're the only reason we were able to make this in 3D and and for it to uh, look as good as it does because uh, most 3D films are done for massive budgets like 50 million dollars and higher. And when we kind of took this on, I think all of the key heads thought it was a bit crazy, but they jumped on board to um, do the best we could and. Uh, what was great about this is we knew that there was a chance that we could fail, and um, we were all okay with that. It was let's just try and have some fun with this film and uh, kind of give the audience a new kind of experience for this story. Yeah. So, so what were your challenges then working on, on a film like this, like shooting in the conditions and locations you were shooting on? Working with me. And working with Dylan. <laughs> um, I think the biggest challenge is that my name is also Dylan, and every time somebody on the crew called Dylan, we would both turn around, and it. Uh, thanks. We we eventually uh, established the designations. They just called him Dylan 1.0 and me Dylan point 3.0, and that was really the biggest challenge of the film was just starting to tune out when people said Dylan. Where was Dylan 2.0? He's uh, uh, he's is he he's, even he's here? Also in the Dylan, film. are you here? That's amazing. No. But uh, I mean, from a technical challenge, it was really just the. Um, uh, for 3D film, we really did have limited resources. And um, part of the, the strategy in being able to, to um, complete a 3D film was that the, the production company, Dylan and Andy and, uh, and all company, um, had a 3D rig built in Edmonton. And I believe the manufacturer, I saw him earlier, he's, I'm sure Larry he's in the audience, here. Larry Kelly and Dale Gregg. Yeah, put up your um, hands. They, they built Alberta's first uh, 3D rig and it worked like a charm for us. Um, so that was, uh, you know, a, a, I guess the challenge was that a lot of it was uh, makeshift and do it yourself from production to post production. And um, I've, I've, I don't think I've ever worked with such a hardworking uh, crew throughout. And Mr. Pierce is probably the most hardworking person in the Canadian film industry. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Do you have any other, any other questions? Gotta wrap it up. Just, just before the last question, sorry, I, 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 want, I want a couple thank yous. Could sure. I slip yeah, them yeah, in? Yeah, uh, we really want to, we had a lot of support locally. Obviously, we, we used a lot of local talent. You've recognized them and our, our crew. We also had financing come in from the Edmonton Film Fund, which is now EFF Media Investments. This is the first film they've taken a chance on with uh, local filmmakers. And we really, really thank them for their support. Yes. <laughs> And also, the, uh, locally, the uh, Super Channel uh, is based here in Edmonton, a pay TV channel, and they came in early with a license, and uh, uh, that really helped us kickstart the financing. So we'd like to say thank you to them and to our other financing uh, partners. Thank you. And, uh, no, go ahead. Oh, Lindsay, she could come Lindsay. talk. Lindsay, come talk. Snowmobiles. The ski wheel. She's adorable, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, so the snowmobiles were kind of a fun job. Um, those are, um, there's two old snowmobiles in there. there one's a 1972 um, Massey Ferguson Ski Whiz, I think it was called. Um, and I found them on Kijiji. There was a guy who was selling like a set of them. One of them that could be smashed because it had no engine in it, and then the other one that I actually drove. And the funny thing is we, we didn't get to to throw the one with no engine off the, off, the, off the hill. We ended up having to use the one that drove properly. And it actually worked better after it landed, after that crash, so that was pretty great. But um, yeah, it was, a, it was a, a tough project. There were a lot of, lot of really fun things about it, and uh, the snow and the snowmobiles just uh, added to the complexity. Because it, it was a movie called 40 Below and Falling, but it was actually Five Above and Rising, so we had to make most of that snow. Yeah, I think this is the first project that had to ship in snow to Alberta. Yeah. Um, and we never thought that would be an issue when we, when we sat down and talked about January, what the issues are going to be. Um, but I have, I have to say that uh, that snowmobile stunt specifically, um, that ski whiz actually jumped better than that brand new sled that we had jump. Uh, we had two grips uh, pushing it just before it went off. <laughs> we, we actually, that thing, that thing jumped and it landed just perfectly and kept running. Like Lindsay said, we actually had to beat up a machine to make it look like it yeah. did that. Uh, that's Alice. This is also a creation of Lindsay and Wes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you, everyone. Um, there's voting outside. You can vote for the film and whatnot for various things, so uh, make sure you do that. Uh, make sure you stick around for uh, Jeremy's film, How to Plan an Orgy in a Small Town. It's hilarious. It's yeah. hilarious. It's uh, we, Jules prequel to how she got to this movie, but not really. But she's in that, and she's just as funny. It's true. It's uh, an unofficial Jules State doubleheader tonight. That's right. Yeah. Uh, thanks for uh, coming, and, and uh, thanks for experiencing 3D. We, uh, in Calgary, we showed it in 2D, but we really felt it was important to uh, show it in 3D here to everyone who supported us. So thank you very much. Thank you.